What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom out, of course people looking forward to what's next for their big release, but also questions around maybe spin-off titles. Well, Nintendo certainly shot one down that people have been asking for and we'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about a very strange warning that was issued by Valve with the Steam Deck and I have to find out if this is actually a, a thing. And we're also gonna be taking a look at a certain interview that might shed some light on what exactly happened with that Time Splitters game that was in development with Embracer Group. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and Rocksteady. As we're a couple months out from this game releasing and people who played the closed beta under NDA have <laughs> very vaguely expressed their thoughts around the game itself. But one thing that I think a lot of people are at least intrigued by would be the story. Well, that unfortunately has been just leaking out online over the last couple of days. And in fact, we can see this posted up over on Twitter. This is from Rocksteady Studios saying, we're looking forward to players experiencing the story we've crafted and Suicide Squad killed the Justice League once the game launches in the new year. It is very disappointing to see details being shared ahead of the game's release, so we can only urge you to avoid spoilers where you can, and please try not to impact the enjoyment of other players by posting spoilers. Okay, the game coming out February 2nd, 2024. Before there were uh, quote unquote spoilers that were out there early, apparently story details for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but if you played the closed beta, you'll know those were not correct, it seems, but now the most recent leaks actually show quite a bit of information around what's going on in that game. And there's also images of certain characters that haven't been shown yet and more. So if you are someone who is looking forward to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, I would avoid a lot of that because while WB is out there striking this stuff down, it's still getting thrown up on places uh, like, uh, like Reddit, on Twitter, forum posts randomly, so keep an eye out for spoilers. Also, we do still have some games coming up in 2024 for Nintendo, even though most of us are assuming we're gonna see their next device, the successor to the Switch. One of those is the Luigi's Mansion game, and as you can see here that was posted up by Wario64, it looks like it has now been rated by the SRB. Lu Luigi's Mansion 2 HD got an E rating on the SRB website. Yeah, this is supposed to be releasing summer 2024. I'm thinking that's gonna be earlier in the summer. Like, I feel like this lines up as a good June release. And again, this is gonna be kind of that in-between time period for systems as we are hearing about like different remasters and, and remakes, of course, Luigi's Mansion. And then we also have, uh, we have another code that's coming up. And then we have uh, Paper Mario, but we also have uh, Prince uh, like Peach Showtime. That's a, uh, an original game. And Metroid Prime 4 is out there somewhere, but it's gonna be this in between, I think, 10 or so months before we get to their next system with I'm sure a big launch lineup or at least a decent launch lineup and then a large slate of games for that first year. Oh, and it looks like Sea of Stars continues to roll along when it comes to sales and player counts as this was posted up, we can see over on their Twitter account, saying that over 4 million players have tried out Sea of Stars since launch. We also had heard that they sold roughly, what, a quarter million or so copies. And that's after also launching on Game Pass and on PlayStation Plus. So they got, I'm sure, lump sums, uh, sums obviously, from both services there. And it seems like Sea of Stars continues to just get out there, people trying out the game, which for a smaller studio, yeah, they're just, they're trying to get their name out there, let people try their game through these subscription services, which is where I'm sure a majority of these numbers are coming from, obviously, but it seems like they're pretty happy with how they're doing right now, and I have to assume just the PlayStation Plus and the Game Pass money probably recouped all of their development costs, and they're just making profit at that point, and now they're creating more awareness around their studio, so... Whatever they have, I'm sure coming next, more and more people will be checking it out. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with The Legend of Zelda, a franchise that has continued to grow and I mean really, really took off when it comes to sales and just mainstream notoriety with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom has just continued that upward momentum. So obviously we're thinking, okay, big, big plans for the next Legend of Zelda game. 
That's gonna be a while though, and we would assume there would be some spin-off games, some remasters, remakes, collections like the Wind Waker Twilight Princess that's been rumored for years and years and years now, but what about the idea of a game that would maybe fall in line with Super Mario Maker, but for the Legend of Zelda series? Well, E.G. Alnuma did talk to Polygon actually about that. In fact, he was asked, hey, what about the idea of making a Zelda game where you put the power in the, in the player's hands and they can just create their own maps for the Legend of Zelda dungeons and sort of just put it out there for other people to play through? This is what he had to say. When we're creating games like Tears of the Kingdom, I think it's important that we don't make creativity a requirement. Instead, we put things into the game that encourage people to be creative and give them the opportunity to be creative without forcing them to. There are people who want the ability to create from scratch, but that's not everyone. But I think everyone delights in the discovery of finding your own way through a game, and that is something we tried to make sure was included in Tears of the Kingdom. There isn't one right way to play if you are a creative person, if you have the ability to go down that path, but that's not what you have to do. You're also able to proceed to the game in many other different ways, and so I don't think that it would be a good fit for The Legend of Zelda to necessarily require people to build things from scratch and force them to be creative. So I do understand the reasoning when it comes to a big budget Zelda game like Tears of the Kingdom to make a, to do a Zelda maker, but for a spin-off or something that has a smaller budget, something that would kind of fill in the gaps between those, those longer development cycles, I mean, 2017 to 2023, there's a six year cycle there, and they use the same map really, right? I You feel like having something like a Zelda maker, not 3D though, I, I understand that the 3D aspect would probably get overly complicated for not only the developers making the, the tool set and the, I guess the game to make a game, but the people also putting it together. But I, th I think something like a 2D isometric top-down Zelda creator or Zelda maker would be genuinely interesting, especially to see what people can come up with for a version of Zelda that seems to be more and more left in the past. I know we had the Link's Awakening remake, but just getting a brand new Zelda game like that isometric top down is becoming, I think, less and less likely. And we'll just see more remakes or remasters in that fashion. Why not let people out there who obviously are very creative as we see what happens with Super Mario Maker, take a shot at something like Legend of Zelda Maker, or you, I mean, call it something else, I'm sure. But and it's, to me, it seems like a fun idea for something that can release between these big time 3D, even open world Zelda games. Also, there's one other thing in this interview I, I wanted to point out as Alnuma was asked about what, what's your favorite ability in Tears of the Kingdom. If you could just pick one, this is what he had to say. I guess for me, it'd have to be Ascend. I'm somebody who, you know, if I can find a way to cheat, I like to do that kind of gameplay. And so once I had the Ascend ability, I really was looking for all sorts of different places to make use of it. I wonder if he was also making use of the duplication <laughs> glitches that uh, ironically were getting patched out over and over again, despite Alnuma apparently just like likes to break the game or cheat in ways of using Ascend. And you know, something tells me that Maybe, maybe it was one of those people who was just uh, going out there and duplicating all kinds of stuff to get a leg up in the in the game. Interesting uh, phrasing there and answer with all the duplication stuff that was going around though. Next up, let's talk about Sony, Ben Studio, and Naughty Dog as a LinkedIn post appears to point out a project with the two studios collaborating. We can see this though that was posted up. It was spotted here by Faison with a senior gameplay animator at Ben Studio. It was there until April 2022, so two years, four months time. Worked with Naughty Dog to prototype and create content on an unannounced project. And EBC titles worked on here, unannounced Naughty Dog project, unannounced Ben Studio project, which by the way, Ben Studio is, I, I would say a, a studio at Sony that kind of flies under the radar a bit. I know they did Days Gone and that wasn't necessarily the, the highest received or critically acclaimed title in the Sony catalog. But if you go back to it now, after they patched a lot of stuff up, especially on PC or on the PS5, it is a lot better when it comes to a lot of the glitches and the and the performance and stuff, but it comes down to obviously your view on the structure of the open world and and a lot of the stuff they did there. But 
But in this case, what game were they working on with Naughty Dog? Because I, I, I don't think that's still in development. In fact, I feel like this is a game that Jason Schreier had alluded to, that being an Uncharted game. Now, we know uh, Ben Studio has worked on Uncharted games in the past, like uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss, that being on the Vita. And I am curious what exactly they would have worked on here for Uncharted, because Uncharted, while they did do the remaster recently that was more or less to, like the collection uh legacy of thieves collection more or less to move it over to pc and then also here it is on the on the ps5 i'm curious if they had a plan for a spin-off of it kind of like lost legacy would it maybe follow uh follow uh, nathan drake's daughter through for this the next part of the story there a lot of questions on, on that side but i am also really curious what ben studio is working on because whenever we discuss studios within sony and what they are setting up to show rarely do i hear ben studio come up so that's one i would keep an eye on because they definitely have a lot to prove after what happened with days gone and i'm i i feel like they're gonna surprise some people when they do finally show up so that is exciting but in this case i feel like the project or collaboration they have with naughty dog unfortunately is something we'll probably never see next up let's talk about a very strange warning that valve has issued for steam deck owners and it has to do with sniffing the fumes from the exhaust vent on the device yeah that we can see this was over on Reddit as somebody screen capped their conversation with a customer service support rep um, where they do ask, is it safe to inhale the exhaust fumes from the top vent of the Steam Deck? It's somewhat of a meme to enjoy the fumes, but I think I kind of like it. And the, I'm sure they paused for a moment there, Steam support, <laughs> and then said, as with all electronics, it is generally not recommended you inhale the exhaust fumes on your device. While there are no safety concerns with general usage, Directly inhaling the device's vent fume should be avoided. We understand that it may be a meme, but please refrain from this behavior for the safety of your health. I, I mean, what do you think? What do you think they're gonna say there? Like, oh yeah, just just make sure you inhale deeply when you're near. They're gonna say, hey, d can you stop that, please? I mean, it's in writing, so they're they're gonna say that. But I had to double check because <laughs> this this caught me off guard a little bit. And like, there are Reddit posts on the Steam Deck Reddit from years ago. Like, does anyone else with a Steam Deck like to smell the hot air that blows out of the top of it? There are a lot of comments here of people going, yeah, I, th I thought it was just me. I didn't want to say anything, but I do enjoy smelling a pair of the fumes out of it. And I, I do like some of the comparisons. Some saying it smells like burnt electrical tape. Uh, there's one that mentions uh, fresh plastic. Another that says, reminds me of the smell of walking into an old school blockbuster. <laughs> Do the fumes coming out of the vent, could they potentially hurt you? Probably not. I mean, I mean, think about it. It's it's technically ejecting that into the room that you're in anyway, but I, I don't know. I guess there could be a uh, compound in the air. I, you're smelling copper, as they mentioned, plastic, I guess. It's going through the fin array of the heat. I, it's not really going to hurt you i guess but i'm also not willing to like sign that off in writing as the person on steam the support moderator there is kind of saying don't don't do that yeah i'll, I'll go with that but yeah that that, that must have been a fun inquiry to get there who'd have thought you'd come to work and someone would be asking you if they can inhale the fumes coming out of the steam deck exhaust and in our last bit of news let's talk about time splitters once again as of course free radical shut down time splitters pretty much canceled at this point with embracer group going through all kinds of cutbacks and trying to consolidate down so that their books make sense but many of us have wondered what exactly were they making there under the time splitters name we had the concept art that got out there and now there is apparently an anonymous interview that was more or less verified for the person's identity through some artwork and concept art that they sent over that uh paints, I'd say, a very expected picture when you think about a pitch for a shooter like this with all the components in place for, you guessed it, a live service game. But let's take a look. This posted up over on the Free Radical fandom. Two questions I want to point out here. One saying, how far was the game into development? They say, still a ways out, two years probably. The direction of the project changed earlier this year in 2023, around March. We did a massive 180 into a Time Splitters 2 remake-ish. Remake with a few new slightly changed levels, an alternate timeline story. 
Okay, so that, I, I would take that. That'd be fun. Originally, though, it was a <laughs> Fortnite clone. Nobody wanted that, really, not even us, but we didn't have much of a choice for a long time. They go on to say, does that mean it was free to play? Yes, it was a free to play battle royale with some additional modes like deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the bag, <laughs> etc. Characters and skins were microtransactions. At least that was the plan. There was debate over what would be offered as standard and what was purchasable. But for the sake of the publisher, we showed everything as purchasable. So the idea of trying to make another Fortnite, a battle royale out of time splitters, sounds terrible, obviously. But in terms of trying to get your project greenlit, it's probably one of the best pitches you can make right now. And although it might be waning a little bit with what we're seeing around the industry, but think about a couple of years ago. Hey, we're going to make the next Fortnite. We're going to do it under time splitters. I got to spend a bunch of money to get all these people together, form the studio, but that's our plan. A game that we can support for the next 10 years, make a boatload of money off it, microtransactions all over the place, and we're going to go after the Fortnite money. Yeah, it makes sense why Embracer would have been like, all right, yeah, let's do it. Let's get this thing going. Whereas after they saw that it apparently turned into Time Splitters 2 as like a remake that wouldn't be the next Fortnite, oh yeah, and it's going to take probably another four years, m most likely, let's be real, uh, to come out. Yeah, they're, they're, it's not what they were originally envisioning. They already have cash flow problems. We're cutting this out. And it's unfortunate because I wouldn't have minded a Time Splitters 2, we'll say, remake for now. I think that could have been a lot of fun. And I don't think every game needs to be live service, battle royale. Sometimes an arcade shooter with online components is enough. And I wish the industry would remember those days a bit, right? To go back and say, hey, we can make a single player game and then just have a multiplayer mode alongside of it that we don't have to update and have hundreds of people supporting for five or six years. Sometimes it's okay to just have a multiplayer mode on there that we can jump in from time to time on our own with our friends and just have a blast with. But yeah, unfortunate stuff there for time splitters. Seems like the development was all over the place and that uh, kind of makes sense now hearing that why it was probably on the chopping block for Embracer. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I asked which Nintendo franchise would you like to see a Mario Maker like game from? Yeah, Zelda leading the way there with Mario Kart close behind. And then look at Metroid right there as well. Yeah, Zelda makes the most sense. I mean, Mario Kart would be fun, but you figure that's, that's going to end up being kind of limited with it just being basically a track that you dress up a bit or change paths and those sorts of elements. Whereas Zelda, I mean, the possibilities would be, would be limitless, you figure. I mean, I would still keep it isometric because the 3D aspect could get a bit out there in general. That could be what we put under scope problem when it comes to just development of that game. But I, I just feel like it would be awesome. Think about that. Also, you could go from 8-bit to 16-bit and then maybe up to like what we have with, uh, with A Link Between Worlds, those kind of visuals. See, that would be awesome. But I don't know, I guess Nintendo isn't really thinking that way. Let me know if you would like to see a Zelda maker though down below in the comments. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from The Shadow saying, didn't Microsoft's leaked roadmap that we found out about not too long ago say that then next console, their next console was planned for 2028? Not the plans can, can't can change, but bringing a release forward like that sounds like quite the scramble. So those slides, my understanding, were from 2020 and it was more or less, okay, the X Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S are done. They're shipping. What do we do next? What are the plans? How can we draw this up? Because when a system ships, that company starts planning the next system. It, it really is like a, an endless thing. And then eventually they get to the point where they, okay, we have to start procuring parts, figure out how this actually comes together, roadmaps and stuff, probably about halfway through the generation, which uh, PS6, I'm sure that's, uh, that's going to be on deck here pretty soon for Sony internally. In this case, though, it appears Microsoft, that still would have been their planning phase. Maybe things did change behind the scenes, as Phil Spencer alluded to, and they thought, you know what? Let's kick off the next generation a year or two sooner rather than try to do a mid-gen refresh. We'll get to 2026 with our current Xbox Series X and get things rolling along there and get a bit of a head start on Sony. Worked for, with them for the, the Xbox 360, as we saw how the PS3 and the 360 were neck and neck basically the whole way. Maybe it can work for the, the next generation as well. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Well, there is the Legend of Zelda Maker. Do you think there's a place in the market for Nintendo to release something like that? And then 
Also, what about Valve issuing a, a warning when it comes to people inhaling fumes from the Steam Deck vent? And Time Splitters getting the Fortnite treatment. How do you think something like that would have come out if they had gotten it to the finish line? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.